guys, it's Serena, math person. Today I'll be going over question 203 on SO exam P. So pause the video quick and try this problem yourself. Okay, so if you're attempted, let's just dive right in. So basically, they give you a joint distribution function right here, and they're asking you to calculate the variance, the conditional variance of y given x is equal to 2. So first of all, let's see what the range is because it says x is equal to less than y. So this is the x equals y line. And let's pick a random point. Let's say this is like 1, 0. Is 1 less than 0? Nope. So then this area right here is this whole part right here. Everywhere else is 0, so it doesn't really matter. We don't have to worry about the other parts. And now they're asking you for the conditional variance. I, I always think these, these problems are easiest when you start off with the, prob um, the probability, the conditional probability first. So this will be the pro conditional probability of y given x is equal to 2 is exactly just the f of xy divided by the marginal distribution of x being equal to 2 given x is equal to 2. So the numerator just stays the same, so let's work on the denominator. The f of x, the formula goes like this, where y goes to, from negative infinity to po um, positive infinity of f of xy evaluated in terms of dy. But what we're actually looking for here is when f of x is equal to 2, when x is equal to 2. So when x is equal to 2, let's say this is like 2, the x on the lower side is just a constant, so this becomes 2 is less than y, right? So y is less than 2, let's say like that line is like right here. Let's say this is y is equal to 2. And they're saying area where y is greater than this 2 part. So that's this whole area above it, this whole area above it. So if we're integrating in terms of y, we're looking at the, this change, right? So the lower limit is that 2. And the higher limit, it just goes on for infinity. And we know that x is equal to 2, so we can just plug in 2 for this x right here. 1 over 8th, e, 18, e to the negative 2 plus y over 6. And we're integrating this in terms of y, dy. For me, it's always the easiest for me to just think of this the exponent as e to the negative 2 over 6 times e to the negative y over 6. Because this way you can see that e to the negative 2 over 6 is just a constant. So we can just throw that out as well as with the 1 18th. And now we're just integrating 2 to 18, 2 into infinity of e to the negative y over 6 dy. Well, that's just a pretty simple integral. e to the negative y6 stays the same. And we have to multiply this side by negative 6, right? And the constant just stays the same. Integrating from 2 to infinity. When you integrate this, wait, this becomes 3. So this is this negative 1 third e to the negative 2 6. When you plug in negative, when you plug in infinity to this one, you basically are just getting 1 over e to the infinity. So 1 over anything really, really big just goes to 0. So this is just 0 minus e to the negative 2 over 6. So this is exactly negative one third e to the negative two six but two negative is two negatives make a positive so you get this times e to the negative two six you can just add those two together so you get one third e to the negative four over six or which is also the same thing as two over thirds all right so that's what you have in your den denominator f of x y that just stays the same 1 over 18 e to the negative we can still plug in the 2 for x so that's 2 plus y over 6 and denominator is the thing that we just found 1 third e to the negative 2 third 1 third e to the negative 2 thirds already already so that's our probability distribution function let's simplify a little bit more so the 3 can actually flip up front up up to top we can think of the numerator as well as e to the negative 2, 6 times e to the negative y, 6. And we see that e to the negative 2 thirds on the bottom too. So divide by e to the negative 2 thirds. 
the constants can add up together, right? So this part, this part right here, we can actually say is e to negative two six minus four six, right? Two thirds is we can just multiply top and bottom by two, four six. So this is equal to e to the negative one. Okay, so then now this part can be s simplified back to 1, 6, e to the negative y over 6 times e to the negative 1. Or this could also be said <laughs> 1, 6, e to the negative y over 6 plus 1. As you notice, this is very similar to our exponential distribution, which is 1 over lambda, e to the negative t over lambda. But then you notice the t is just shifted to the left by one but then again for variance if we're looking for variance it doesn't really matter what if it's shifted or not as long as the range is the same so this range right here one six e to negative y over six plus one is exactly the same has the exact same variance as one six e to negative y over six so we using our exponential knowledge that we have <laughs> we know that variance is equal to lambda squared where in our case, lambda is equal to 6, so our variance is 6 squared, or 36, which is our answer C. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Otherwise, as always, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Bye!